Okay, so we have one, two, three, and the negated query. Time to prove something. Okay, we're trying to derive bottom out of this. All right, ready, go. Who wants to tell me the next step? Eats Joe Fish. So do, do resolve two and three together? Okay. So, so when we take, we're going to take three and we're going to take two. And if we squint, we can resolve. We have to squint our eyes a little bit because here we've got a negated is, and here we've got a positive is. So like matter meeting antimatter, just like we talked about last time with resolution, we should be able to resolve. But they're not exactly the same. We've got an X here, and we've got a Joe there. So this process of squinting to make them look kind of similar has a fancy name called unification. We're going to unify this and that by saying, oh, okay, if we just take this variable x and we write Joe instead, now they're the same. Life is good. This is like the hardest part of implementing the theorem prover, I think, is getting the unification on all the bookkeeping correct. Because once you decide you're going to rewrite, you're going to replace x with Joe, you got to go here and replace that with Joe and replace that with Joe. And you might have to do multiple replacements at the same time. So. So when we take 3 and, and uh, 2 prime, so let's uh, 2 prime plus 3 is going to give us um, not likes Joe Y or eat Joe Y. All right, everybody get that? Um, if you want to be really fancy, you can write it out longhand. Um, the long, laborious way to write it out, I'll just do it once because I never do it myself, but uh, it's good for you guys to know what the real way is, is to use the same line format that we had before. So we've got is Joe cat, and then we've got the not is x cat, or not likes. Oh my God, I'm already falling asleep. Uh, can't even write anymore. Uh, eat x y, and then you say I'm going to resolve them, and you draw the line, and then you write the substitution over here. And I don't even remember which way you do it. I think it's something like instead of x, we're going to write Joe. Like that, and then you write the result down here, where you say not likes. And you've got your little substitution over here to remind you what you're supposed to do as you're writing it out. So eat Joe Y. So if you like look in the textbook, they'll have stuff like that. But as far as like how do you really do it, I, I, I would just take the short route if I were you. Okay, so that's good. So Adam's given us one step. Uh, let's make some progress here. What, Dylan? One and three. One and three. Okay? So we've got one prime plus four uh, is going to give us what? Tell me, Dylan. Okay. Yeah, what is 4? Is 4 the negated query? 3? Oh, sorry. 3 and 1. Beautiful. I made a mistake. My fault. Okay. Now, when you're like in a situation or an exam or something, don't freak out. 
Like, okay, we're making progress here. We're, we're deriving some new consequence of things we know. It's all good. Oh yeah, let's give these numbers. Should we call this four and call this five? So now we're going to say f uh, resolving four and five, uh, resolving on likes. Yeah. So now we have not is why fish or eat Joe why. Okay. Uh, Somebody's yeah. Um, so what I would recommend is the instant you have your K, when, when, you, when you're parsing stuff in, um, I would just rename all the variables as you go and just keep a running global counter so that you never end up with two sentences in your KB that have the same variable in them. I mean, it's very confusing. Is that x and this x the same thing? Especially once you wipe out the quantifiers. It's like, hmm, I would just make sure that every formula is, has unique variables. And then you know that if it's the same, it's because it's from the same formula. Uh, it's, it means the same thing. Now, when you have a single formula give rise to two, well, you won't have this. In the simplifier, you have to deal with the case where you have one formula coming in and two formulas going out two clauses going out. These are called clauses when they're just these disjuncts. Um, so ideally, we would be rewriting new variable names for everything all the time. <laughs> but uh, I don't personally do that myself. If you guys want to do that, that's fine. If it helps you keep everything straight. Um, I always just make the assumption that if they're in two different lines, they're different variables. If they're in the same line, it's the same variable. Okay, we're trying to get down to bottom here. Not having much luck. The only, you know, you know, uh, resolution is reputation complete for first order logic. So, if bottom is derivable, we should be able to get there. Now we might have screwed up in our knowledge engineering. All right. Let's take the let's take six and the negated query. Um, we resolve on eats, and y becomes fish. So not is fish fish. Uh, wow. Well, the problem is that we've never said that fish is fish. Yep. So uh, I think we made a mistake in our knowledge engineering. Um, so if we just had assumed, uh, where is the example? Cats eat, cats eat everything I like. Cats eat fish. Fish, fish. If we had just said that, if we just said, uh, Likes are if if we just made fish a constant. Uh, well, if we if we hadn't bothered if we'd made it a constant in this expression here, uh, then we would be home free. But right now we see that we have an extra thing that we need to we need to write down. So uh, if this is seven, we'll just say eight is is fish fish. And then we can take seven and eight and get bottom. Whew. That was kind of painful for a three line example. <sighs> but now you've seen one complete example of resolution refutation theorem proving. Now there's still some more things we need to explain. Like I need to tell you how we get rid of existentials. Um, maybe that's it actually. Um, yeah, I need to tell you how we get rid of existentials. Uh, and I'll do that in a sec. Uh, any questions about what we've done so far? Lee. Could you expect these conditions out of each statement to go A? And instead of A. like Joe, why, you would say X. And while that wouldn't really help 
you need all those details. You mean you need to know, you need to know um, when you when you're looking for things to unify against. Um, you want to be able to match a variable against a potentially complicated thing. So for example, one way in which this example is simple is that we don't use functions anywhere. Um, and so if this had, if we wanted to resolve this against mother of John, is mother of John, comma, fish? Your mother <laughs> is a fish. <laughs> um, if we wanted to resolve against that, um, you know, we'd want y to be matching with mother of John, which is a totally legal substitution. So it, those two expressions unify. Um, so you don't want to get, you don't want to be trying to be too clever about making atomic chunks out of things, I if I understand your question. I Yeah, the idea of, of indexing all the uh, which formulas include a particular predicate positively or negatively is a fine idea if you want to be super fast. But I'll totally tell you, I'll give you an absolute A on the assignment if everything is perfect and very slow. As long as it's not like stupidly slow. Uh, but like emphasis on correctness, like get the assignment, I would recommend getting the assignment to work correctly and then speeding it up. Yeah, okay. I was just wondering if that would work. Yeah, you want to be looking for negative is's when we have this is. Yeah. 